The 49ers yesterday in week 12 of the 2024 NFL season were humbled in Green Bay. That's how we're going to remember that defeat for San Francisco. And coming up here on today's 49ers report by Chat Sports, Chase Sr. here with you, going to explain why the Niners are in serious trouble. But if you're going glass half full here, San Francisco is only one game back atop the NFC West lead. So can the 49ers still win this division? Type Y for yes, type N for no. That is today's poll question. Let your voices be heard. And with that, let's start the show. Kyle Shanahan said it best after the 49ers were humbled and just smacked around by the Green Bay Packers. San Francisco embarrassed on the road, and what a joke of a performance that was. That was one of the most pathetic losses that I have seen in this Kyle Shanahan era since he took over in 2017. In four of the last five years, the Niners have had a lot of success, four NFC title game appearances, two Super Bowl trips, and they've won a lot of ball games, right? They haven't had a lot of defeats like that, and that's why it sticks out like a sore thumb. And to see the Niners get stopped by the Packers in a manner like that, we knew it was going to be an uphill battle with Brock Purdy, Trent Williams, Nick Bosa all out, but we didn't envision the game getting that out of hand in the way that it did. And it looked as though the Niners didn't even want to be on the field. They didn't even want to play. And in that case, why even board the flight from Northern California to Green Bay, Wisconsin? The 49ers defense missed 15 tackles in the first half alone. According to Pro Football Focus, the Niners as a team throughout the game missed 19 tackles. It is the most in the Pro Football Focus era in which they have been charting that statistic for the San Francisco 49ers. This defense being called by Nick Sorensen, was shredded. They were bullied. Josh Jacobs was running over, running through multiple Niners defenders. They had no answers against the pass, against the run. Matt LaFleur was in his bag, and Nick Sorensen was getting pantsed out there. San Francisco as a team committed nine penalties for 77 yards. There were penalties on offense. There were penalties on defense. There were penalties on special teams. You had Debo Samuel dropping two passes, one of which led to the game just unraveling when Brandon Allen got picked. And by the way, Green Bay was able to capitalize off these turnovers for San Francisco. A Brandon Allen fumble, Brandon Allen pick, Christian McCaffrey fumble. They turned those turnovers into touchdowns. Even when Christian McCaffrey had a normal good play, which has been a rarity this year, doesn't look to be himself, he fumbles as he gets taken down to the ground. Kyle Shanahan going with Brandon Allen was criminal. I think that Niners players knew that once Brock Purdy was ruled out and Brandon Allen was named the starter, they knew they had no chance in this football game. Joshua Dobbs is more athletic. He's the better player. He can use his legs and feet to create behind a bad offensive line with no Trent Williams. You had to know the pass protection wasn't going to be good. He's more accurate. He has more experience as a starter. He has a better arm. He is the better player. And when your head coach goes with the lesser player at the most important position, how do you think that makes the players on the roster feel? They knew they didn't have a shot to win that football game going in. And Kyle Shanahan continues to not play Jordan Mason when he is clearly the better running back option as compared to Christian McCaffrey. Kyle Shanahan also continues to run the outside zone runs. Niners can't block it up. Niners up front can't create any running lanes for the running backs to have splash plays, to even have average plays. They're getting stopped at the line of scrimmage, a yard beyond it, a yard behind it, seemingly on every occasion. The offense throughout the 60-minute ball game had one quality drive, and I thought that the Niners coaches were fleeced by this Green Bay coaching staff, and that has happened often. From Kyle Shanahan to Nick Sorensen to Brian Schneider, the position coaches, nobody brought it, and the Niners from top to bottom were completely embarrassed. Let's revisit this. How did the 49ers miss 19 tackles in a single game? I want to know how that is possible. No pride, no effort, not wanting to play, sensing that the season is over. 
The 49ers played as if it was the preseason. They played as if they have no shot of making the playoffs. Those 19 tackles, the most in any game that Pro Football Focus has charted since they started making that statistic a thing. And it's surprising to see which players were missing tackles, which players were struggling, which players were not bringing it. Fred Warner, one of the best defenders in all of football, he missed four tackles in that game. Jair Brown is a physical player. He missed three, and he was just flailing at the legs of Josh Jacobs. Isaac Yadam, burnt toast. He can't play. Get him off the field. And Renardo Green, good rookie year. Didn't have a great game yesterday. The P.I. in the end zone, which I thought was a bad call on Romeo Dobbs, and he missed two tackles as well. You know it's bad for the San Francisco 49ers when the heart and soul of their team, the heartbeat of the 49ers, act as though the season is over and he is just listless and speechless on the sideline and on the field. And you know what's bad when the 49ers' best defensive player is struggling as bad as he is. Fred Warner's not playing good football right now. Fred Warner hasn't been playing good football for a long time. Remember how he started the year? We're having a conversation here about he could be the defensive player of the year, how he was worthy of that honor, best off-ball linebacker in football. He was forcing fumbles. He was picking off passes. He was making destructive plays against the opposing offense. Against the Jets, a 92.6 overall PFF grade. Against Minnesota, 95.8. He's one of the only players who brought it that game. Against the Rams, still pretty damn good at 71.5. And against New England, 96.6. He hurt his ankle in that Patriots game. And since then, his play has really fallen off dramatically. Against Arizona, a pro football focus grade of 54. The following week on the road against Seattle, 61.4. Against Kansas City, 65. He couldn't tackle Patrick Mahomes, which led to that back-breaking run. Against Dallas, always plays well against the Cowboys, 72.8. But against Tampa Bay, below 70 once again, 69.7. Against Seattle, 67.3. And against the Packers, 44.7. Fred Warner has looked and played like a shell of himself. And Fred Warner looks mentally, physically, spiritually broken. He is the heartbeat of this football team. He's the heart and soul of the 49ers organization. George Kittle was on the sideline. He is usually so positive and so uplifting. End of the game. He's on the sideline with his head down. That is really telling. Because when Fred Warner and George Kittle, two team captains, two consummate pros, two leaders, look mentally, physically, spiritually broken, that embodies the rest of the football team. The entire Niners team is looking like that, playing like that, and coaching like that. This Super Bowl hangover is real. And it smacked the Niners right in the face, splashing some cold water right on them. And it seems like the best thing for the 49ers right now is to miss the playoffs and reboot fresh for 2025. I don't think that they're that far off from getting back to championship contention, but having played all of the football that they've played over the last five years, four NFC championship games, two Super Bowls, the one year they didn't make the playoffs was that Super Bowl hangover year, they have not had long off-seasons to heal. They've had shorter off-seasons with not ample time to heal physically, mentally, spiritually. And they have lost during that stretch two heartbreaking Super Bowls and a crushing 2022 NFC Championship game against Philadelphia where their quarterback got hurt very early in the game. They need to rehabilitate. They need to recover. They need just some time off to get a fresh breath of air and just reset for next year and run things back because I just don't see how this team is going to be able to turn it around here in 2024 given the way that they've played all season long. It seems as though that Super Bowl against Kansas City back in February in Las Vegas broke this organization to a certain degree. Now I will say, there is still time for the 49ers to make the playoffs. So on the other side... We're going to take a look at that Niners playoff path because you're telling me there's a chance? Yes, I am. Our sponsor for today, our friends at Prize Picks, Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. It's the best place to get real money sports action. 
With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, PrizePix has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. It's the best way to get real money sports action in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. We have a lot of people who tune into the show from those states. And Prize Picks also invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Prize Picks also runs the best specials. For instance, on Thanksgiving, a free square. Tyree Kill, one yard equals one win. You can win as well if you plug in that link down below, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And when you do that, you get $50 when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive that $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. We'll put that link down below in the show notes, and it's attached to the pinned comment of today's 49ers report. You look at the NFC West standings. As bad as this season has been, as frustrating as the 2024 campaign has been, as ugly as that loss was yesterday against the Green Bay Packers, the Niners are one game back in the division. It's the NFC West, and it's the wild, wild West right now. And there is a reality where the NFC West in Week 13 goes 0-4, and we're looking at the same situation where the Niners are still one game back after they play the Buffalo Bills on Sunday Night Football on the road. Look at the NFC West schedule here in Week 13. Niners on the road against the Bills. Bills are coming off a bye. Another rest disadvantage for San Francisco. Seahawks traveling across the country to play the Jets. The Jets are coming off a bye. You have Cardinals at Vikings. Vikings are a really good football team. And then you have the Rams traveling all the way to Louisiana to take on the New Orleans Saints. And the Saints are coming off a bye. So there is still a path for San Francisco to win the division. And if they win the division, they can host a playoff game. And once you get inside the dance, you can get dancing and anything can happen. I just see no way how San Francisco can turn it around because they've literally been this up and down, Jekyll and Hyde, self-inflicted wound after self-inflicted wound team all season long. The Niners' remaining schedule here at Buffalo, at home against Chicago. Tough game. Bears are playing well. Caleb Williams was throwing piss missiles yesterday. And then the Niners have the Rams at home. Then they ran that uh, round out, excuse me, on the road against the Dolphins. Dolphins are playing really well. That's a tough game. At home against the Lions. And then on the road against the Cardinals. The Cardinals schedule on the road against the Vikings. They play the Seahawks once again. The Seahawks beat Arizona pretty handily yesterday while the Seahawks were at home. Week 15 at home against New England should be an easy game there for Arizona. Then they have to go on the road against the Panthers team that is pretty competitive. Week 17 on the road against the Rams and then week 18 against the Niners. The Seahawks on the road against the Jets. You have week 14 on the road against the Cardinals. So back-to-back -back roadies. Week 15 against a good Packers team, week 16 at home against a really good Vikings team, and then two road games on the road against the Bears and then on the road against the Los Angeles Rams. Speaking of the Rams, week 13 at the Saints, week 14 at home against the Bills. Bills fans are going to take over SoFi Stadium. Week 15 on the road against the Niners. Week 16 on the road against the Jets. Week 17 home tilt against the Cardinals, and then week 18 at home against Seattle. So all teams in the NFC West, all four of them, have a pretty difficult path here on out. And I think as you look ahead and you think about the landscape in the NFC, you think about the playoffs in general, I think the NFC South division winner loses in the first round, and I think the NFC West division winner loses in the first round as well. Just don't think this division is good enough. And I want to leave you with this. Do you want the Niners to make the playoffs? Or, like San Francisco, are you burnt out? M for make, D for don't make. Let me know. Join the conversation down in the comments section.